The mainstream media just won't let a pandemic stop them from glossing over Trudeau's epic failures to focus on who they think the real bad guy is, Donald Trump. This time, CTV seems mad that Americans still have some domestic air travel when, up until at least yesterday, there were flights arriving from mainland China and other coronavirus hotspots to Canada daily. Today, we fact-check the CTV. Let's put that radar shot up that we're just seeing, and there it is. Um, you know, and this is a reduced flight schedule. So, put this in perspective. What we're looking at now, this live radar shot of airline air traffic in the U.S. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at, Lisa. We're looking at a tracking map that shows the current number of, uh, of flights, domestic flights across the United States, and it's still a staggering number. A couple of things to bear in mind. This is after airlines have scaled back their flight schedules by between 40 and 60 percent. Uh, Alaska Airlines, for example, has announced a 70 percent reduction in its flight schedule for April and May. Um, and I suppose another uh, perhaps comfort is that a lot of these flights are not full. Southwest Airlines, for example, reports that a lot of its flights are going with, uh, you know, below 20 percent occupancy. But to the degree that air travel is a potential vector for the spread of this virus, uh, uh, there is still an awful lot of, uh, mm -hmm. of flying going on. And, uh, you know, some places are showing more uh, concern about aviation than others. Uh, the Bahamas, for example, has shut down all incoming flights. Now, to, to bear in mind what a, an enormous leap that is and sacrifice that is. Sorry about that clip in your face on a Monday, but that CTV's flagship host, Elisa Laflamme, on CTV's Saturday show, along with CTV's Los Angeles bureau chief, Tom Walters, pretending to be shocked that Americans are still allowing some domestic air travel within their country. But if someone from La Flamme's own network, CTV, had a moment of intellectual curiosity or journalistic curiosity, they could have taken a trip down to Toronto's Pearson Airport to see the sheer volume of international flights that have been coming into Canada from coronavirus hotspots up until at least yesterday, our David Menzies has been going down there to the airport with his microphone on a hockey stick a couple of times a week to fact check the Prime Minister in real time about the so-called advanced screening measures for international travellers that Trudeau says are definitely in place but clearly are not. Just look at this. Uh, well, we have this, uh, not really screening, but we got this all these brochures and... Um... Actually, when we were in Karachi, there was a lot more people wearing gloves and masks in the airport. No one externally took your temperature or anything like that? Not at Pearson, no. You know, did anyone remotely take your temperature to, you know, check if you had a fever or anything like that? No, I haven't noticed that. No. In Pakistan, then here, everywhere, they have those monitors, they scan your fever and everything. Even in uh, like the smallest airport, when I landed in Multan, it's not even a big airport, I was in Karachi, Lahore and Multan. All the airports, they have those scanners, they're scanning everybody. Even I went to a hotel, they're like disinfecting everywhere. I got on the bus, they have disinfectant big gallons in their hand, they're washing your hands with it and washing your suitcases with that. And here I don't see that. Pakistan is a third world country, less cases than, than Canada. U.S. and Canada has much more cases. I'm coming from Pakistan. I was there for two weeks. Uh, you see a lot of precautions, much more measures than, than a, a Western world like, you know, Canada. President Donald Trump already stopped flights from China back in January, and he got a heck of a lot of criticism for it. Now, here in Canada, Trudeau has been allowing Chinese and other international flights to land in Canada up until apparently yesterday with little to no screening and no temperature testing. However, travelers get a pamphlet in English or French, but not Chinese. So that's the enhanced screening they keep talking about. CTV has that fancy graphic about the bad orange man's flights on a national broadcast, but they didn't show the easily trackable international flights coming into Canada every single day, or at least up until yesterday, all the while, Trudeau is refusing to govern from his hermit occupation of Rideau Cottage. 
Further in that CTV interview with Walters, Laflamme became very concerned that American air travel within the United States could harm Canadians who work in Michigan. Just watch this. Uh, there are about 500 Detroit police officers off the job under quarantine. 40 of them have tested positive for the virus, and that includes the police chief. Mm, that is also of, of great importance to Canadians. We know that just between Windsor and Detroit, there are about 6,000 people who travel back and forth for work, obviously at this point. And a lot of them are health care workers, I'm told. So, I mean, this really matters, the situation in Michigan and how, you know, this virus clearly knows no borders. So that's weird. Canadian health care workers crossing the border to work in Michigan could bring the coronavirus home through a legal border crossing. Let me show you something. Just watch. Today, Canada and the United States are announcing a reciprocal arrangement where we will now be returning irregular migrants who attempt to cross anywhere at the Canada-US border. So Trudeau says he closed the border, but did you know Trudeau made a special exemption on his amendments to the Quarantine Act when he closed the border to exempt protected persons under the Immigration and Refugee Act. This means those who illegally crossed into Canada and he exempted those who were visibly sick. Trudeau said he banned foreigners from coming to Canada if they're sick. That's true, but then he immediately unbanned them if they claim to be refugees. Isn't that convenient? But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's the order in council to amend the Quarantine Act. Look at this. Prohibition. Signs and Symptoms, Section 2.1. A foreign national is prohibited from entering Canada from the United States if they exhibit the following signs and symptoms. A, a fever and cough, or B, a fever and breathing difficulties. But here is where sick asylum seekers get to come into Canada anyway. Non-application. Certain persons, A, referred to in subsection 5-2, who seeks to enter Canada from the United States for the purpose of making a claim for refugee protection. I guess if you take in all your news from the mainstream media and the Trump deranged La Flammes of the world, unscreened, unvetted migrants already illegally in the United States, already exhibiting signs and symptoms of the coronavirus illness, while scrambling across the border to claim asylum here in Canada, well, they're not going to be a risk to the general Canadian population. But healthcare workers who are saving lives in the United States and living in Canada, well, they just might be. I guess this is how CTV protects their access to Trudeau in press conferences. You know, the same press conferences Rebel News is banned from? CTV deflects and directs any criticism that Trudeau deserves over to President Trump. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. At Rebel News, we not only hold the government to account, but we also are critics of the mainstream media. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, ring the bell so you never miss another story, and make sure that you and your friends are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And if you want to help us keep our coverage going during the pandemic, please go to helprebelnews.com.